Welcome back to the Balance Light of Teletainment, the Good Morning in Niger show. And of course, after Papa Jojo, we get a very, very cajad guest in the house. Now, of course, we know the election season on the build of the atmosphere is very thick. You can almost cut it with a knife. That's what everybody talk. And uh, none of the aspirants who we get uh, will be bigger than what we get in the studio right now. A very, very young man who, um, that if you follow him profile, an activist, an um uh, educationist, now person where they very, very outspoken, where people don't hear several times. And uh, for some of the things, when they don't talk, some people I don't open, they're very, very surprised. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to make you join us. Welcome, uh, Mr. Omoyele Shore in our studios. Good morning, sir. Nah, good morning, to everybody good from morning. Nigeria and from inside the studio. <laughs> How not be? Yeah, we, we did it. Right. We just did it. Yes. Now let's talk about your interest in the presidential race come yes. 2019. Mm -hmm. You and a person where we never see in the political terrain, and why you decide now to come into politics? Uh, now because before now I did do other things in the you know in the political activism terrain. We do fight for human rights, environment. I don't do media. I try a true Sahara reporter. But come discover say, all of the things we will do over these years, no fit change things as fast as we want, except we put our leg, come on trouser, put our leg for another trouser with people we need to change the country. Now make me decide, say, this time around, though, we, we, don't, we don't tire for the system, especially for 58 years where they, they rule by the same set of people, where they recycle themselves, and some of them serve come old past Nigeria. Nigeria, we get a population of 70%, we be young people. It's the time they then don't reach. They will just enter the system, chase out all these people, we don't make our system, they work. Put our people there, we get capacity, we get competence, and we can make the country go to the next level we're supposed to be, because Nigeria just lagged behind for too long. So now the reason why I do and be that. And I get many other reasons which should say, as I look myself, look at the people where they run the country, I know inside me, say I feel run this country better past several of them. In fact, for my lifetime where I've done day active, day old, the sittings, I know say I've I've be president, but I pass many of people with president of this country. In other words, you're they more competent than Most a lot of them. Part, now, speaking about competence, yes. and we're speaking about the human rights where you talk, you know, one of the things where you, you know, you don't need to do over yes. time. Um, for the country, if you look at statistics, we have at least six children where they die every day mm -hmm. from malnutrition, yes. malnutrition. We have a lot of women and children who they're very, very vulnerable and who have been violated. What in you in your capacity if you do in terms of reducing that statistics to the barest minimum? Well, we, maybe we separate them. You know, the people with they die of malnutrition, now, to make sure, say, we get food sufficiency for the country, where children will feed they eat, you know, or children with the die of diseases before they even reach a certain age. Now, to make sure, say, we get a healthcare system, we go day from when they did inside their mama stomach until when they burn them and after they burn them. Now, so that they take care of children in other parts of the world. But for this country, we would day, for women to even find somewhere to burn, now, so most women, they die. every statistic we they do we has to do with uh, children mortality rate, you know, antenatal, postnatal, you know, uh, mortality rates. Now Nigeria get the worst all over the world. I mean, now because leaders for this country no care. Hospitals no day for where people feed born their children. We will not get food sufficiency for children. We know they feed our children for school. When we do them now, propaganda will they take do them, you know. If you give children do do for this country now, transparent do do, you're gonna see the do do on the other side because we don't get any system where we cater for our people. Our people leaders waiting for this country, they take care of themselves. Even our president as they claim say the man poor rich in children on the go school for Niger. We well, speaking about the system where they yeah. talk of, yeah. we, we, we need to hear how, like if they talk of the healthcare system, how you go take improve them. No. If they talk about the food security, like yeah. you mentioned, yes. we need realistic plans where you, we, if we hear them, we'll not say, okay, we'll not say you're not just giving us generic answers. You're being specific in yes. your plan in making sure that the country move forward. Mm -hmm. So for food security, for example, how you go fit to them? Yeah. Food security, we say, when I've been the travel one, and I like to give an example because I travel around Nigeria, and they go between... Yola and Jalingo discover land, they left, right, and center. But for the whole trip, we take us about four hours. We only see one plow where they plow uh, the land, and a cow see the dragon. So for you to plow that land at this stage for 2018, we suppose get tractors left, right, and center for that side where they plow land. With the growth, and we will grow because for this country, nowhere where you even throw something, you throw something anywhere, it will grow. But we know they do that. 
For example, you go see governors and you get convoy of almost 30 cars. All of them, Jeep, you know, uh, I mean, uh, SUVs, especially the Prado type, where they cost money. We're not supposed to get governor, we get past two cars, maximum. All those rest of the Jeep, that tractor, they're supposed to be. Where go they work for the land? I can't tell you, but after that one, the biggest problem we will get in the agricultural sector is post harvest loss. So most people, they will even grow crops. But by the time they grow and finish, when the team mature, to carry and go market now, wildlife, because road not day. You know, to carry and go, after they go market, if they don't fit sell them, they don't fit store them because we don't get silos. We don't get refrigerators. We don't get those things where they make other countries this food sufficient. You know, they, they, they even go back, come discover, say, most, most people will get 10 acres of land, only one where they feel grow because the government not support them. They don't know if you get loans where they feel take start their business, I mean, their farming. And like I said, they don't get processing opportunities. Many things they wrong with the way they practice agriculture. You know, we even call them saying that subsistence agriculture. For example, when they talk about headsmen, for example, I stopped for that road one day. I see headsman with a carry car or four neck house. Say, I stop I'm saying, Fulani has one. What do we feel do for you, sir? We go stop this waka with the waka part. Now, because I see him with him children, I see him with him wife. I seen the waka around, they go now you say, the children with the waka follow them about, they are denied education. Mm. You understand? I can't tell them, say, if we get ranch, we put you for there, put school for there, put hospital for there, put water for there. You know, go better for, for, your, for your business. You say you prefer, but nobody discuss them. Everybody just talk, say, Fulani has man, a bad person, bad person. Government don't get any agenda for them. The people, they scandalize them. Let me say some of them, not they bad, but he say, not be all of them. They bad, but nobody, they even address the issues. He say, the federal government don't get any conversation with any headsman. Maybe they will get conversation with the political arm of the full and headsman where they call Miyeti Allah. Mm -hmm. Some of those Miyeti Allah people, they make noise for radio or TV. They don't even get cow. This cow business is a $3 billion business. Well, let's come in from here. Yes. Now, um, we know that there are different processes of governance. Mm. Now you get the word from world to local government, then mm. from local government to state, and then from state to federal. Yes. Now you don't decide to leave these other processes and then go for federal yes. um, to uh, run for the presidential race come 2019. Yes. I want to know how impactful you don't date to your community. You come from Ondo State. Right. How the people of Ondo State don't feel your presence? See, I never entered government before, but even at that, Presence to feel present, no missy, you must come, you must start from your village. When I <clears throat> when I start activism, not be 1993, now the whole country know me as a young person. At that time, we be waiting be Niger problem, Niger problem and a military rule, and the annulment of the June 12th election. Now we will stand it behind that biola. We no talk say, well, because we come from Mondo, say we must go stand with the council law, we they not annul an election. It was a national problem. We stand with them. Now, those students were there with me in those days, pro democracy activists, uh, pro democracy activists like Ghani, Wale Shoyinka, Femi Falano, Balarabi, Musa, all of them around the country. We join hands together to solve a national problem. Nobody talks to now because I come from one of those days, say, Tiaga guys, no fear, enter my eye, or may police not beat me up, or may they not expel me from the university. So, when you don't pass those levels, there's no reason for you to even reverse back. This was in 1993. Then I tell you, not be almost some almost 25 years ago with that. So and progressively, I move on from national level, you know, as a student, come moving to the media. Within 12 years, where I do Sahara reporters, it became internationally recognized media. Does it mean that I must go and set up uh, Allah Wiye for all those states before you go before you recognize say I get brain to run a national media? No. No, now the thinking way they limit how we they see ourselves with that sometimes. Not be everybody need to operate from village. And sometimes your village feel, no, feel your immediate impact, make the world they feel your immediate impact because the world don't become village self right now. Now as we talk, of course, the world yeah. don't become global village. Yeah. Um, now we get some schools of thought we believe say, uh, right now we know say we don't see the emergence of a lot of young people of a lot of young people like yourself, mm -hmm. uh, we don't decide say they want change. Uh, the rest of the inside this South Kobodo, Nigeria. Yes. Now, we get you here, of course, um, sometime earlier, we don't get the likes of uh, Professor Kingsley Mogalu, just yes. where you've been, they sit down there. We also don't get the likes of um, 
Uh, yeah, it's today. Uh, yes. A lot of presidential aspirants. A lot of young presidential yeah. aspirants, yeah. Now, I said that the school of, the idea this school of thought we believe in, rather than having just one of these societal changes to come rule us on top, why we not get a pool of such people changing, you know, changing the rhetoric, say maybe being among the lawmakers to change things where you eventually go influence the top, whoever mm. go there, the top, or decisions where the top go there. Uh, how you take see this particular school of thought? No, everybody now, the rise of where they did, mm. even for our party, for December, we won't go contest for local government for in those states. Right? Because we believe, see, for us to change the country, we need to start changing. For we for even contest for Ocean State, but I next say because any new party when they register, they don't already close Ocean State before we come in. So we encourage people. We get over one thousand people we don't register with us, say they won't run for different offices across Nigeria. You know, some of them they are abroad they move back. Because we provide the platform for them. But if you they talk say because we day young, we must start again that same conversation. Say so you must go and start from one small place. No, Nigeria get big problem. People will get big ideas, big thinkers. Now they must go face the problem at the top. And for those of us who don't get all this experience of getting involved with the political system, they engage them over the years. We get experience as to how the system they work. Those of us we don't do media, do activism. We don't go jail before. Those of us we don't get issues before and so don't suppose we don't get international exposure as well. See as things they work all over the world. It is our job to go for the best and the biggest job in the country. So because, no, you, just, just, just because now the presidency we feel influence things to change fast pass. So talking about the influence mm. things to mm. change uh, uh, fast. Now we know say one of your mandate now to end hunger. Now mm. looking at the statistics, about one hundred and twelve million Nigerians now we get who are living below the poverty line. Now, yeah. every one minute, six Nigerians, they go poor. Mm. How you plan to change these statistics? Now, to provide jobs. How will these jobs be created? Yeah, make they listen to me now. If you look at our agenda, what they call it spice heat. That is to say, our first priority now to secure the country, because without security, people don't even feel invested, people don't feel move around, people don't feel go farm, as we see with Hasman, followed by power, electricity. One of the areas where we want to grow job now to use solar energy, take generate 4.5, uh, 4,500 uh, megawatts of electricity. That one alone to put the pieces together will employ over two million young people. You know, it may not even be young. Anybody will want to work for that sector for the not because we get plenty of sunshine. And let me say, I just make up the story. If you go Morocco, you go Tunisia. They don't already grow the electricity rich point where they don't begin to sell to countries like Malta, France. Even Angela Merkel, when they come to Abuja That's last okay. week, talk up. Stay with Nigeria, they look when they invest in renewable energy, solar. So now something where I don't they talk for six months ago, that one alone. We won't employ over 200,000 teachers. We will go into every corner of this country, begin, you know, revamp the educational system. We we'll, won't we'll build over 17 million houses. That is the shortage we Nigeria get in terms of housing. China don't do them. So till now, there are over 64 million apartments where they empty for China. They call them ghost cities because they provided enough housing for people. So you, who go build them? Now all these people, we go build them. Job go full everywhere because the investment go day. Because before now, when they carry all the money, we will get go outside. They will steal and go build houses for Dubai. We take and develop other parts of the world instead of developing our own country. So several other plans, they like that. We, you know, as long as people get job, one person will get job in the way our culture they set up. Go influence ten more people. They help send them to send them to school. Help their grandmother, their mama. They will pay hospital bills just like we. Nigerians, where they are abroad now, become the social security department of Nigeria, where they send money through Western Union to help. People will get, the thing will percolate over here, and that will end the hunger. You know, I mentioned agriculture before. So we get plenty of, plenty of acres of land where we need to grow and where we feed grow. We go create food sufficiency and security for Nigeria. When we say Nigeria go feed, they even sell food all the way to Senegal. From here, go South Africa. The opportunities they here. But if but you we know they make with the, the investment with the solutions we'll, where they talk, these mm -hmm. solutions are not rocket science. Not be something where anybody yeah. needs to go to a special school. Exactly. There are solutions we don't already there out there. But yeah. why you feel say we never we never fit accomplish, especially when it comes to food security. Not, not be, why you feel say we never fit accomplish them mm -hmm. for inside the country. Because this we did, far? because we they make mistake. 
What yeah. kinds of mistakes? They elect, we elect people we know sabi what they do. That's the simple thing. So are we? Maybe, are you? You are technically saying, say the current president as he did now, so he don't know what he did do. You know, I don't. I don't be sad. They hide now. I talk him every day. Say the man don't know where. You know, sometimes I don't even think say the man know where he did. I go one meeting yesterday. Or people we know as they operate. They say they work four hours per day. That's the most that the man can because they're sick. I know they're tired. But they go package them, package them, package them, or bring them back because cabal they there. We won't use them to defleece the, the country, and they don't want to be. They don't. They know say they're not even winning election. But they're using fake credibility, won't take win election. The moment you win election again, they go back London. Our president, you don't know how many years, I mean, if you combine number of times we don't travel out of this country, out of three years, the man don't already spend about six or almost a year for hospitals to go upside, up and down. I mean, as we look at, we look at the man's pedigree, we say the man, no, no, you know, they read, you know, they deep, all these things they did. So why would they do here they deceive ourselves? So we don't know where the problem be. Now the same thing we would not do progressively. When military guys come, now they come take care of themselves. We get to civilian, and the same thing. Everybody just they, you know, they just they, they are just they take care of themselves, carry all the money within Nigeria, go buy houses, buy jets, you know. Whereas people we did for here, we are denying the opportunity where they're supposed to get. So um, until you elect capable leaders, we get character. We know they greedy. You are not going to get it right. All right, now, just, uh, just before you answer the question, you've been talking about uh, exporting certain things. Like, say, we feel grow so many things that we export. You talk yeah. about renewable energy, solar yeah. energy, say, some yeah. countries they even export to other places. Yeah. Now, recently, we've been seeing something we trend for social media. Yeah. We've we been measured, we done the spark of different responses, where well, you've been talking about the exportation of cannabis. Yes. You go mm -hmm. Indian hemp. Yes. And uh, this did not spark up a lot of reaction from different places. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to make you, you know, Say something about that. We know say we get laws here now where they fight the sale, the use, the growth of cannabis and India hemp. But you be categorically come out and talk. Say people will come after you for waiting you talk. Of course, I know. But no. then you say we they grow enough cannabis where we feel exports, where we where they feel used for medical reasons. Yes. Tell us more about medical that. Medical research. Make a start on by talking about cannabis as, as you know, as a, as as itself. Mm. You know, say there was a time when they do all research in Nigeria and be the happiest people in the world, or yeah. some of the happiest. Do you know the reason? Because we get one gene, what they call feel good gene. It's called cannabis gene. So, Nigerians, by nature, we get cannabis inside our system. And this is not beside make them up, or this is research. Mm -hmm. We don't prove them. That's why we are happy people. Regardless of as they beat us up, hunger, we're mm -hmm. happy. Because the gene, they inside our body. But most importantly, if you look at our environment, they grow cannabis everywhere, mm -hmm. most like you know in Undo, Edo, Delta area, and cannabis is the fifty-five billion dollar industry right now. The conversation where I want make we get to say, before it's too late, maybe we get into the game because other people did their, did they grow their cannabis, they improve them, you know, in such a way that in another five years they could force us to the import cannabis to the cure problems where we get. Where our own cannabis supposed to not the market all over the place. People they think about cannabis from the point of say the one where you smoke high, which is the HTC. No, that's just one part of cannabis. Cannabis is being used to make t shirts. The oil is the best to grow your hair. It's, it has several uses. In fact, it is known not to have side effects. But it has been criminalized and demonized through religion. Say cannabis, uh, alcohol was past cannabis, but we they buy them now, we they import them. Cigarette is, is worse, but we still they here, the, you know, legalized cigarette. But cannabis will fee help us improve even our economy, diversify economy. People know they talk about them. The United Kingdom get laws against cannabis now. But now they are the biggest exporter of cannabis. The U.S. get laws against cannabis, but now Colorado, we don't change. Last year, they made one billion in Colorado, just one state in the U.S., from selling cannabis. So mine is that, why don't we just forget about the hypocrisy? Let's put our cannabis in the market all over the people. They talk, say, oh, if we legalize make cannabis, people go, they go crazy on the street. It's not true. If you go to um, Holland, for Amsterdam, they have coffee, they call it coffee shop, but now cannabis where they sell for there because cannabis get a lot of Benefits. impact, medicinal, medicinal impact. You know, they help to cure cancer, they help to cure a lot of things, anxiety, they can people. As I did so, I never smoked cannabis before. So that people go no see, not be safe because, you know, this guy they high. I've never tried it before, maybe because me I they high already on ideas. <laughs> so I don't feel add cannabis general. But you see, we don't wish 
a point in this country and make you listen, there, there needs to be a next generation conversation that will leave old ideas behind. And one of it is to start discussing difficult topics in the country. Because the next generation, whether we like them or not, they have moved on beyond. But the leadership has not been able to catch up with them. I am proposing a leadership that can catch up with them, that can be part of the next economy, that can be part of the next technology we go make our country fit work. Now, all these ideas where yeah. they bring out, now ideas where some school of thought believe say they're fantastic. Now, yeah. another school of thought is bringing um, to, to concern the mindset where Nigerians get. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the mindset, that's why a lot of things are happening the way they happen. Because of mindset, we get stomach infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Because of mindset, certain good leaders where they're in certain positions fit not work because some other people get certain mindset on how certain things mm -hmm. where they work. Now, this mindset of a thing, how and where, at what level you fit impact the change where you feel safe you impact. If you, not only you, they be the leader, we get certain mindset and the other mindsets around you are different. How you go take, influence the mindset of your fellow oh, yes. followers to implement that good result where you feel so you get. Look, how you feel influence other people not to engage, not to interact, or put your ideas out there. That's why I love free speech, you know. Because some things do, when we say you put them out there, people will push back. Well, because opportunity day to the interact, they look at it. It's just like this cannabis conversation since yesterday. You don't see them from shock to real conversation. You could come the one that's saying that everybody is smoking booth for this country. Because a lot of young people are saying, we've been waiting for this conversation to happen. Because regardless of whether it is legal or illegal, people, they're available. But at the hate when I send DLA, they say that they burn cannabis, cannabis farm. You understand? When you could be exporting the thing, I'm not even saying that we should legalize it at home, but let's have a processing process out there that can export the thing to the market where it is needed for medicinal purpose. Let's start from there. But as per the idea we talk about, we encourage other people. We are always encouraging other people. Say these ideas where we get to interact with them, challenge or That's why me, I do town hall meetings in 28 states. No presidential aspirant. In fact, all of our colleagues with really young people. They don't fit do the kind of town hall meeting where we don't do all of them combined together. And not, this, not beside they take and boast for here. And when we go out there, we go ask people, ask us questions, make we answer. Where we don't feel answer, we go also borrow ideas from. Because sometimes you get ideas where we say you never test them. Hypothesis where you never test. When that hypothesis reach market, they go refine them for you. You say we bring the idea, I can't discover the different angles day. I like what you thought saying engaging them is very yeah. important. Now, just very quickly, because time will be our friend, mm. let's talk about something when Nigerians, they come outside, talk, say it must be scrapped. Let's talk about the special anti robbery squad. Yeah. Now, according to National Bureau of Statistics, they don't list the Nigerian police as the most corrupt um, for inside we do Nigeria. Now, yeah. how you plan um, to reform the police force and do you plan on scrapping SARS too? Absolutely. No, I go scrap SARS. The first day where I come inside the office. And your reason? The reason is that SARS, SARS is useless. How? As a yes, SARS is not a you know, fight crime. SARS is a victimization unit of the Nigerian police. Police not supposed to victimize. Police not to fight crime, to detect crime, gather intelligence. Not be to the look at person. They don't, you see, not be, because me, I didn't young and I don't be activist. SARS not be new to When I did University of Lagos, SARS, they among the police unit where they use against activists at that time. They don't carry me go SARS before. Everybody with the inside that cell for a catcher there, they don't shoot them for leg. For night, they go pick people out, you know, go kill. The moment they, they knock the door like this, everybody they pray, they make it not be them when they want. So they have been wasting people, innocent souls, inside SARS cell. This was 1998 to when I go do Nuga Games protests against military in those days. We find young people where we say, they replace them with person will be real arm robber. They come carry no same person, they hold the place because if the guy come, they don't tell the guy, say, now you go mesh, now you go bear the name of this man. And the guy dare not say not be him. Now when we reach the place, the guy come they cry from through later where they carry and come say, they just carry and replace person with be serious arm robber kick pain with they out there. So SARS not be crime fighting unit, SARS not criminal organization. I don't talk to him before. And this one of the things where we go scrap. Police no need to have victimization unit for it, for it to be effective. SARS is one of the units we be I saw for police. It's now, speaking that, about security, yeah. in addition to police, now, this, I'm talking about the security of the nation. And what do you go do differently to make sure see Boko Haram insurgency, plus other insurgencies were inside the country, will come down to the bureaucracy minimum? What realistic plan do you have that is going to be different from what we've already seen? 
first thing I go do, all these commanders, I go fire them. You know, because all these generals where they see, they know one made the war end because of the benefit program. How are they benefiting? Which proof you get? Ah, we should be at the workforce for Sahara reporters. No, we may carry all the stories before they come, when, before Buhari come, come, they arrest all those generals for Air Force or Army. We don't want to carry stories, see, these guys, they steal money. When Buhari come, where they don't find money for General House? Inside cooking port to inside soak away, you know, inside tank, GP tank. Money there everywhere. Where do you think the money was from? They were stolen from money that was supposed to be used to buy weapons, equipment, and to pay for the welfare of soldiers. So as long as we get all these generals where they benefit with the for Abuja, with their big fast stomach, no one go war front. So would they say that the soldiers now turn around come become the Boko Haram people? Because we no, they talk about Boko Haram. No, we don't tell say we know they fight Boko Haram the way we're supposed to fight Boko Haram because people don't want to make the war end. You don't hear about how much they take negotiate with mm. Boko Haram to collect people. So tell those Chibo girls when they want to collect them, they say Boko Haram say made they release all of them. The people who go negotiate say no, 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 no. We don't feel the all of them like that too because we need to make more money, make a whole lot. But, uh, well, well, but the speaker, Lai Mohamed, come and say talks that there was no negotiation when it comes the to the exchange girls. Yeah, of but, the but, girls. Yeah, but you, United Nations come talk and say, let the money exchange hands now. Because now you and we carry the money, go give Boko Haram. But that time where they say, where will the reporter say that she get the for his reporter? Now we first talk and say money exchange hands. Everybody they abuse us, saying I lie, money no exchange hand and a conversation. You see the way we book her out, take role inside Dafshi. Come we even bring the girls back. Come they address the parents, even they not send their children to school. You go no say something, they go on. So aside from sacking the top leaders for inside the military, which other No no equipment. You have to equip them, you have to train properly, you have to increase our ability to gather intelligence so that so many of the things we book around they do self. They know if you carry them out before you get to them. We have to use technology. For example, the whole of Nigeria Army no get drones. You understand? Two government, two president don't come now, come they commission the same drone. The same drone where Jonathan commissioned, that one where they for there. Now Buhari come, they just change the the paint small. We don't get drone, we don't get technology, we don't get ability to dictate. Even me as I day here, I get two drones, civilian drones, where we say if you fly four kilometers uh, this thing. But I carry and come to Nigeria, they see them. Thank you so much, say so you come inside our house. Thank now, you. just quickly, the last question for me. Mm -hmm. You feel, say, you will come out victorious come 2019? I, I believe I'm. I, there's no doubt, say, except we don't want to win, I will not go feed the fittest people because they don't shoot themselves for leg. You know, a small doctor, they talk. What's the bad penalty? What's wrong? Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Thank you so much for yes. coming. We really, um, quite an educative time we will get with you. To enjoy more of this, our Ogunke videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.